the net recording mode. Great. Again, welcome to the Stratological webinar for today. Your presenter is Sheila Miller, and I'm going to turn over to Sheila Miller now and let her introduce herself. Well, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you are out there. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us um, to learn a little bit more about Stratologica. I'm going to go ahead and turn myself off. I just wanted to say hi before we got started. And I will go ahead and get started with the presentation because I want to be mindful of everybody's time commitment to be here today. So today we're going to review teacher presentations and student presentations in Stratologica. And thank you, Pam, for taking care of the questions as we go through. She'll let me know if I need to stop for a minute and answer questions. But let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about myself. I am, as Pam mentioned, a nice term curriculum specialist. I work primarily with the New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania schools and school districts. I am a former educator. I actually owned and was the director of a state-funded pre-K program. Uh, actually down in Florida and was an elementary teacher. Uh, the reason why I have a passion around Stratologica is I have been a big proponent of technology in the classroom, even being an elementary teacher. I was uh, out there saying we needed iPads in the classroom before it was a popular thing for elementary schools. Now I get the opportunity to work with many districts and I'm couple of different technologies that we here, have here at Nystrom Education, so I get to be a professional educator and trainer. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to be using and creating presentations in Stratologica. If you haven't had the opportunity to explore this feature with Stratologica, I do think you'll be able to do it after our conversation today. This will take your Stratologica program to be more than just an interactive pull-down map with your students. You can teach your students to use maps, using the maps, to orient them to where situations happen or are happening today. I like to use the analogy of PowerPoint um, with maps as your background is what a Stratologica presentation really is. You're teaching the students about where things happen or are happening, and the map is your backdrop for your lesson. You're utilizing the 21st century learning while you're doing these presentations because you're on the Stratologica platform as well. Plus, you're keeping your students engaged, which is pretty challenging these days in the classroom. So our goals today were when we are done, you will know what a presentation is in Stratologica. You will be able to search the community for lessons in Stratologica. You learn how to use your own personal gallery because if you don't know this already, you do already have a personal gallery with some presentations in it in Stratologica. You'll be able to create your own presentation. You will know how to share a presentation. And I will provide you with a few ideas on how to have students create presentations to share in class as well. So if you are going to follow along in Stratologica, please feel free to do so. As Pam said, we are recording this, so you will have this to go back to as a reference. Everybody should be fairly familiar with our homepage in Stratologica. We're going to go into the map section. And you may or may not have noticed when you've been in your map section, up there in the top left-hand side is a green button that says Gallery. And when you click that button, Gallery, you open your personal gallery in Stratologica. You will notice I have a big yellow sign right here next to these presentations. These were presentations that were designed by our education team and pushed out to all users. So that's why I said at the beginning you already have presentations in your gallery that you just might not even be aware of. You can um, see that my gallery is fairly large, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to manage your gallery as you start building the presentation. You're going to find that you're going to want to know these buttons up top here. So you can filter by what type of um, presentation is in your gallery. Your gallery houses your presentation, project, and custom views. Basically, a custom view is just one 
page of the map, whereas the presentation we're looking at multiple maps and we have a full, as I, I'll say it probably a few times this evening, almost your, your PowerPoint with maps. I have tags on some of my uh, presentations. You'll see here these ones are labeled high school. Um, as we go through and I show some other gallery presentations, you'll see I have middle school geography history. You might want to label them by what class period you want to use them for, what topic you want to use them for, like U.S. Civil War or uh, World War II or something like that. And then over here is the find button. Um, as you get pretty lengthy in your gallery, you can search also by the name of the presentation or who actually was the original person who, who um, designed the presentation. So that's an overview of the gallery. I'm going to walk you through, in case you haven't been through a presentation in Stratologica, I want to go through a couple of them to give you an idea of what a great tool it can be in the classroom. This first presentation I want to go over, uh, marked it here, Leonard Chill. It's a Holocaust survivor story. I've labeled it for history in high school. This is a presentation that you can pull out yourself in the community. And I'll show you when we get to the community how you would search out there. And you can pull this into your gallery. There's actually quite a few uh, presentations in the gallery on Holocaust survivors that are very interesting to share with your students. So this presentation on Holocaust survivors, we're going to walk through the life of this gentleman, Leonard Chill and how his life was affected by World War II. So it starts off in 1932 with him being born, and it shows where he's being born, um, <clears throat> which is interesting because, uh, of course, it was Poland, but now it's Lithuania. So again, it's helping students understand how much our world has really changed over the year. Over here, you can see these are our coming slides. Um, they're organized, actually, by year. But over here is um, a little overview of what's going on in your presentation so you know the order of the slide. And the next one we're looking at, 1939. And now World War II is starting to affect Leonard. Um, his mom is stuck in Canada and can't get back home. Um, she was detained in France. So we start to see how this builds for him. And now we've added yet another country into the mix. She was visiting France. She ends up in Canada, which can lead to a whole other discussion about you know, why people sought refuge in Canada. Then 1942, we're now going through Leonard's journey with um, concentration camps. And the Warsaw Ghetto is where he starts. Each one of these push pins, we won't go through all of them, but I just want to give you an idea, has uh, information on it about the different um, concentration camps and what happened to him along his way. This long line is the walk he had to do from the Warsaw Ghetto to the concentration camp. Now the war ends. He ends up in England. He gets reunited with his mother. And now we're in the United States. And you can see he's even bounced around the United States. Um, so what I think is important here for the students and why it becomes more powerful telling his story on a map is most of our students today are born and raised in the same um, city or town. Now this gives them an opportunity to see how much World War II really affected the lives of individuals. I mean, chances are Leonard Chill probably would never have thought to go to the United States or maybe even England had World War II not affected his childhood and broken up his family. So it just makes for a good conversation for students to realize how much of an effect an event like World War II had on individuals. And I think maps is a great way to show the impact geographically for them. Here's a presentation on the Supreme Court that I want to go through. And this is a great basis for a civics conversation. This is in everybody's gallery. So you don't even have to go get this one out in the community. This is already in your gallery for you. And what I like about um, this presentation is it shows you how you can use a map to just set the stage for a conversation in your classroom. And it doesn't necessarily have to be related to geography, although geography can play a role in it. Um, 
the very first slide here goes through a couple of different videos on who is on the Supreme Court, how does the Supreme Court work, where does the Supreme Court meet. So there's a great baseline for the student to see where the Supreme Court is physically located compared to where they are, and then go through a couple of these videos for them. And as you can see over here on the side, the following slide that has a slide for each of the Chief Justices. And what I find interesting about this, um, we have Anthony Kennedy pulled up here. Um, if you were to scroll down, you can see it gives where he was um, born, where he attended college, and some of the cases that he was involved in and some of his decisions. What I think is important when you're having a discussion with, about the Supreme Court is it's important to know where these chief justices came from and where they lived and grew up. Because clearly, Mr. Kennedy, because of where he grew up, is going to probably have a different take on a, a case before the Supreme Court versus Clarence Thomas as they go through it. So I just think it's a good for students to realize how diverse the Supreme Court really is by going through where they're from and all the different schools they attended. And here is a presentation that goes through ancient Egypt. So this one, I'm going to show how you can use a presentation to lay the foundation for history in your classroom. So this, again, if you were to search ancient Egypt in your community, you could download this presentation and use it with your students and copy it to your gallery, and we'll go over how to do that. But here you can see all the labels have been turned off on the map. None of the countries are labeled, which is perfect in this situation when you're talking about ancient Egypt. And it actually has been marked up so that the students see what area you want to zero in on and have a discussion about. And as you can see, it goes through some of the different slides here. And here again is another slide with um, ancient Egypt. Again, the um, labels have been turned off. If you're not sure how to do that, the full toolbox down here will get you started with turning off your um, label. And then you can see it's been marked up, and there's a video embedded on who built the Egyptian pyramid. So it provides for a great background for students to learn about ancient Egypt and clearly why Egypt ran the length of um, the Nile here. And then we've actually incorporated one of our history maps. For those of you that have history maps, here's a great example of how to segue into it as you're going through a history lesson with students by incorporating real maps and incorporating your history maps to bring it all together for the students in a visual presentation. So I've talked a little bit about using Stratologica presentations for lessons, history, civics, I think geography is kind of obvious, and then um, you can use them for current events as well. So I did promise, after I showed you a couple of presentations, how you could go find the ones I just went through with you. So if you go back to your home page, and you go to that community. I don't know if you've been there before or not, but it's in the top right-hand corner. You click on community. And now you have, you can search the community. This is where teachers across the country are sharing lessons and presentations that they've already done with their students. And they've published it to the rest of the Stratologica community. We will talk about how you can publish your lessons to the Stratologica community or how you may just want to share them within your building. But I think this platform is becoming more and more relevant for teachers as more and more states across our country move to either Common Core or state standards or frameworks. Everybody is trying to teach fairly similar topics in each grade level. So this becomes a great tool for you to start with to get comfortable with presentations in Stratologica. And you can search right up here by topic. And here's um, an example of some of the things you might want to look for as you're looking at them. 
This was created by Monica M. Davis County School District. Um, sometimes it'll say middle school or high school or elementary school, so that would give you maybe an idea of whether or not it would fit with your classroom. It gives the date on when the presentation was designed. And so what you'll find as you research more and more, you will find perhaps, oh, I've seen um, presentations published by this teacher before, and I like them, and I know I want to download this one, so let me take a look at it. So that's why you have that wealth of information there for you. So just to give you an idea, I did a search on the U.S. Civil War, and I've pulled up, I'm going to pull up the major Civil War battles. It was put up by a middle school teacher. Most middle schools are teaching about the Civil War, so I would hope that it would be relevant to my classroom if I were a middle school teacher. And now I have a little preview. I can click through the five slides of the presentation to see if this is really what I would like. And it tells me what map series this teacher has used to create the program, to create the presentation. And if I like it, I can copy it to my gallery. And so I just click Copy to the gallery, and it should come right in. So I've kind of given the overview of the basics of presentations and how to incorporate them in. So I'm going to give everybody a minute if they want to provide some questions to this point. Otherwise, we'll go on. But I'll just give everybody a second if there was anything about searching the community or just the, your own personal gallery before we move on. Sheila, so I have I one. Yeah, I have one question. One is, uh, when you were showing the different pieces in the gallery uh, from the community, if Correct. someone in the community used a map that I don't have, will I be able to run that particular presentation? You will be able to run the presentation, but it will, it will default to the outline series map. So you will still get the content, but like if it's a history map and you don't have the history map series, it would just be an outline map. Okay. So if that answers that question. Yeah. And would you like to go ahead and address this next question? Sure. It seems that a lot of what you're showing is the teacher using this tool, but is it for students also? Yes, it is. And I, <laughs> I would give you a couple of examples of how you can get your students to use it in a meaningful capacity. Absolutely. And probably a good segue into the rest of your presentation, isn't it? Absolutely is. Well, first we're going to talk about um, how to create a presentation, but I will definitely cover a couple of different uses for students. Wonderful. So let me go ahead. Thank you, Pam, and thank you for the questions. And as you can see, Pam's doing a great job monitoring, so do keep your questions coming as I go through, and we'll answer them. We will have another break for questions. So let's take a look at how to actually create a presentation. And although it seems like it might be a lot, it really isn't, but I, I tried to break down the steps for, you, for everybody. And if you do have students using it, I can tell you this, they really don't need the, the guidelines. They, they work very well with the FAQs that are on here and the help videos, and that's about all they need for direction. But I'm going to walk through how to do a presentation from the ground up. So you would go into your map, and right next to that green gallery box, there's a box that says New. So go ahead and you would click New, and then it, and you'll get the submenu, which is Create a New Presentation, and allow you to title it and give a description. And so once you have done that, you should, if you're following along, you will now have a little chart over here on the side. Hopefully this chart over here on the right looks familiar from the presentations I showed you earlier. You're starting to build your, your slideshow over here of your map. And there's your description up here. You can um, create a new slide. Switch to display would be if you wanted it to run automatically. That would be after you're done building your presentation. Um, but as you add new slides, you would click here. But I want to show you over here on the left, I have Mark. Hopefully you guys are familiar with this little stack of papers in your Stratologica program. 
that is your map library. So you want to go and pick which map you would like to choose. Um, clearly, I will be picking a different map because my presentation is titled Statue of Liberty. So I now actually have decided to um, click into the Google Earth view here and have it in 3D. Um, and I have dropped this push pin in. If you are not familiar with this toolbox down here, that is how I put the push pin in. So I highly encourage you to play around with the toolbox because this is going to be how you're going to create these presentations that are going to keep your students engaged. So down here on the toolbox, you go over to this push pin, and then it asks you where you want to drop it. And I just dropped it right here, right next to the Statue of Liberty. I have titled this push pin because now I'm in this menu over here, and I'm building my push pin content. So I've written in the history of the Statue of Liberty. I've given a little description. So that's all right here. If I wanted to get very creative, I could go over to this little menu here, which is the styling menu. I can change the color of the push pin. I can change the color and size of the font. I can basically pretty it up. Um, for those of you that don't know, earlier when I was talking about turning the labels off on maps for the history presentation on ancient Egypt, this um, gear down here in the toolbox section right here, once you click that, that gives you a, a little submenu, and you can turn your um, labels off on your map. But uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's where you can find that. So uh, the next thing I want to show you is um, how to embed the image of a, or a video. You can see down here, we talked about the description and the styling on the last slide. You look here, these are the platforms that will allow you to bring images and video from YouTube, Flickr, Vimeo, TeacherTube, and SchoolTube. We'll go out to those websites and get your embedded code. Now we do that because we don't want to be responsible for having stuff coming up from your um, own uh, hard drive. So that's why we are using these outside sites. If you have videos or pictures you would like to share, all you need to do is create a YouTube account. And then you can bring the images and videos over. Um, one of the things that I want to make sure I talk about here is if we look up top at this little yellow ball here, it's telling us that Right here is something I want to make sure you're aware of as you're creating presentations. This is your save mode over here. You can see I have a triangle with an exclamation point. It's telling me you haven't saved your most recent changes. So anytime I'm working in a presentation and I see this hazard right there, triangle and exclamation point, I want to go over and click my action and save it. Um, so just save and save often as you go, just like in any other program when you're working with it. And so after I've saved it, because see my little note has gone away warning me that I didn't save it, I've saved my presentation. Um, it's actually two slides. If you look over on the right, uh, National Monument, Caring for Statue. So it's not very large, but I just wanted to go through some of the process here. And I can send the presentation. You can see I can share it via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Or you can send the presentation. I can send it to another teacher that uses Stratologica in my building. I could send it to one of my students, as a student can send presentations to me. Or I can send it out to the Stratologica community and publish it. So that's all available there on the action button. So I did promise I would talk about student presentations. So I know everybody has a lot going on. And who really has time to put together some of these lessons? That's why you have students. And so you want to try and pick some of your students that you want to give a little bit more challenge to, some of your students that are good at hands-on learning, visual learning. This is a great way to get them engaged in the classroom. And as they create their presentations, they can send them to you. And then you end up having a library of presentations to use with your next year students, use with your other block um, where you're teaching the same class to. 
and you know, give the students a little kudo that you're sharing their work. And here's a couple of different ideas on what you can assign out to students. Um, you could have your students be a cartographer, and this would be a way maybe that they come back to show their understanding of a region you've been studying or different countries. They can create test reviews for their fellow classmates, um, basically a scavenger hunt through time. They can create bell ringer activities. Some of um, you might be already using some type of this day in history. The History Channel is wonderful. They have it up all the time. Or you might want to have your students research it themselves. Um, or the students have to start the class with picking a particular country and sharing with other students in the class a physical feature in that country and a cultural feature, or maybe a physical feature and a relevant historical um, fact that happened to shape that country's history. So I like the bell ringer activities because with everything the students have going on before they walk in the door, sometimes you need to get them to be engaged and remember that they're in your classroom now and they're gonna, you're, they have to get their thought processing here to go through either US history or world history or, and be engaged for your class. So here are some examples very specific about um, what students can do. So here is how a student can be a cartographer. They are utilizing pretty much everything in this toolbox here. Um, this little overview in the middle says create your own map, use the toolbar, add labels, symbols, markings, place marks. You can see in this particular case it's just an outline map that you know, students can draw on. They can add text to it. And maybe this is the first slide that the student is doing something in the United States. And maybe the next slide they're going to go into a little bit more detail about the New England area. So all of the content that you're looking at on this particular map, the student can just pull right out of the toolbox and put on there. So that's one thing. The other thing is this test review. And again, I just use an outline map um, because I don't want you guys to get caught up into what series I'm using. because. I, I just want you to understand the content you can put on it. In this particular case, this is um, Revolutionary War Overview. I could have outlined the 13 colonies um, if I wanted to. Um, the first question, go to the town where the British troops were housed and the harbor was blockaded. And so they click on the answer, and they're in Boston. And then their next clue is they have to go to um, the Stamp Act Rebellion. And so you can see they can walk through just the United States for history, or you could walk through um, world history this way. And I highly recommend this would be something the students would do as putting together their own review. If you have a standard review that you usually do with students, you know, why not give this to you know, a group of students to put together on Stratologica and just kind of be a different way to present the, the review notes for students. And again, as I said, this day in history, and there's actually uh, quite a few of this day in history already out in the community um, to choose from, get some ideas from. But this is a great um, project to hand the student. Maybe you know you put someone in charge of it one week and alternate the, the responsibility each week for the student. Um, in this particular case, um, Delhi becomes the capital of India. You can even make it, um, tell the students you have to find a video about it. You have to write, um, you know, at least four sentences about it. And you can give them some parameters or not. Um, it depends on how flexible you want to be. And then this was the example where I said earlier, um, you do a, a physical feature and a cultural feature of an area, or a physical feature and um, a historical event for the area. In this particular case, the, cultural feature in Italy is the Vatican City. I think you can kind of see over here the physical feature um, was the Alps for um, the physical piece of it, was the Italian Alps. So that's kind of an overview of the students. And I know I'm on the question piece, but I did want to mention as questions are coming in, because we had this on one of our last ones, I'm going to pull up another slide to just show you. I want to make sure everybody understands that once you download from the community, you can change and edit 
your slideshows once they're in your gallery, so you can customize it to your own. So let me just pull up one of those earlier presentations that I was looking at. So we'll just take a quick look at this one right here, which is the world history. And you can see over here, I have the same cues or the same items that I can do as I did when I created my own presentation. I have the actions up here. It's even telling me you did change it and you forgot to save it, Sheila. So, and I can add in a new slide to it. I can delete the slide if I don't think it's something that I want to share with my students. Perhaps we're not going through the, the who built the pyramids. I don't want to share this. We don't want to go off on that area. So anyway, I just want to make sure that I covered that piece of it. Are there some questions, Pam? Yeah, Sheila, we've got someone who wants to know if students have to have their own account to be able to create presentations. Actually, students do not have to have their own account. Um, once you have an account, all of your students can get their own account. So yes, technically, they do have to have their own account. Um, if you don't want to have every student have it, their own ID. In other words, if you're just going to assign a couple of students in your classroom, you could maybe set up a couple of different IDs, um, very generic ones like student one and their password is history, student two, and again, password's just history. And so it's nice and easy and the students can interchange that way. Or you can go in and actually create their um, individual IDs, but you would do that, not the students themselves. Let me try and show you where you would do that. When you're looking on your home screen right here, make it a little larger. When you're looking at your home screen here, yours looks a little different than mine right here down in the blue, but there is a section in here that says classes. So you would just go in and click classes. Um, label, you know, period one or block A, and it'll let you add students. It does ask you for a student email address, but you don't need to put one. You can just put, like, at history.com, and that's fine, um, because we're not using that email address, and neither are you. Sheila, so maybe that answers that question. Sheila, maybe just for some clarification, uh, if a teacher has an account, they automatically have the ability to add all of their students to that account because Stratalogica is sold to as a teacher license, correct? Correct. Okay. And then we also have another question, and uh, our other question, let me get back to it. Do elementary students use this tool? Yes, they do. Um, for and you can use it two different ways in the elementary classroom. For for the younger grades, um, if you have iPads in your classroom, or if you have a laptop cart, or if you have um, just some just even have computers in their room. You know, this would be something maybe you were just talking. Um, you were just reading a book, and the the story takes place in South Africa. So you have the students go log in and pull it up and look at it. For the older grades, um, they can start doing the, the presentations and sharing information through Stratalogica with their fellow classmates. Uh, I know grade four, a lot of um, areas across the U.S. is where we do the regions. And this is a great tool for you to assign out for students working on the regions to come back and maybe they have to have highlighted the southeast region, and they have to talk about three significant historical facts in the southeast region, three significant cultural features in the southeast region, you know, the capitals of each of the states in the southeast region. It, it's a good tool for that. So yes, it can be used in the elementary, not to go on and on about it. But next, next question. Great. <laughs> okay, our next question is, is there a re is there a reason why someone can't see the atlases on their home page? Is that something that is a different cost? Yes, it would be. I'm sorry. I should have prefaced that. Um, when you look across mine, I have all access, um, luckily, to all the content. So you might not have charts on yours, and you might not have atlases. But if that's something you would like to explore, I highly recommend you um, talk to your curriculum specialist because 
once you are on Stratologica and your students can be on Stratologica, as I was just saying, they can have access to it. They can view their atlases at home and do student activities um, to turn in if you're doing homework at home. Uh, and that works even well at the elementary level, depending on what kind of district you are. Most of your students probably have access to a device at home, so they could read the atlases at home on their own. Okay, and Sheila, uh, do some t do teachers have to turn that on in their library for the atlases to work? Like, could someone actually have it in their library? Maybe they just haven't uh, activated that yet. No. Um, you would have the icon on there. If you think you okay. are supposed to have Atmos access and you don't, again, you definitely need to give us a call, which, by the way, I should mention that. Um, Stratologica support, um, the, you can click right, I don't have it on my screen, but down on the bottom right-hand side is our support address in Stratologica. And we will get back to you. We have a great support team for Stratologica. And that goes for anybody. If you're having trouble creating your students, um, you know, we do have the user guides that are built into our system right here in the blue and the tutorials and videos. But if you get stuck, please reach out to us. We'd be glad to help you. All of you guys will be receiving an email just as a follow-up from the webinar. When you get that, there should be uh, an email address in there, as well as I will be emailing a little thank you out to everyone. So if you have any additional questions, be sure you reach back out to me and I can put you in touch with the curriculum specialist for your area. Our last question, Sheila, is, is there an Android app for this or is it only for iPads? Ah, uh, very good question. I am happy to say, because if you'd asked me two months ago, I would have said absolutely not. But we're getting there. Um, there's a lot of content when you're dealing with um, maps and the Google Earth platform and et cetera. Um, so we are working on it and we hope to have something releasable this coming school year for you. So please um, stay in touch with your curriculum specialist. So when you say Android app, that also means it would be Chromebook app too. Or right. Accessible. Absolutely. Sheila, thank you so much for a great presentation today, and thank you to our audience for coming and joining us for the webinar today on Stratologica. We will be posting this on the Stratologica, uh, on the Nystrom website, and I'll put that in the email to you tomorrow as well. So watch for future uh, presentations. We'll be holding at least one a month over the next uh, couple of months and then starting again in the fall. So be sure to tune in and uh, keep up with all the new changes and uh, updates that are occurring in Stratologica and with Nystrom Education. Again, thanks everybody. Sheila, thank you so much for a great presentation. We appreciate you thank taking you the time everybody. out to be here. Have a good night, thank everyone. You, thank you.